In this problem, we're given a polynomial. We're lucky it's in factored form. We need to find the degree, the zeros, and the multiplicities, and then we need to sketch the graph. So before I find the degree, I want you to look at the factors of x minus 3 and x plus 2. There's no exponent written on either of those factors, but remember, there is an exponent on each of them. We're too efficient to write it. They each have an exponent of 1 on them. There are two ways to find the degree of the polynomial. The long and tedious way is to multiply this mess out. But luckily, there's a lot easier method. Now notice that this factor and this factor and this, the factors are linear. So all I have to do is add the exponents. So the degree of the polynomial is just going to be 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. Oops. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 6. So my polynomial is a degree 6 polynomial. Now in part b, we need to find all the zeros of the polynomial. So that means I have to set f of x equal to 0. So for part b, I need to set f of x equal to 0. So that means 0 equals negative x squared times x minus 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 5 squared. So now all we have to do is already nicely factored. We set each factor equal to 0. So I get negative x squared equals 0. So that's going to give me x equals 0. So I want to start filling out this table here. So I might have a factor of x squared. What's the 0 that goes with it? x equals 0. And the multiplicity is the exponent on the factor. So my multiplicity is 2. Now let's look at our next factor. Our next factor is x minus 3. So that's just going to give you x equals 3. So my factor was x minus 3. It's going to give me x equals 3. And what's the multiplicity? Well, what was the exponent on that? A1. Now let's go to our next factor of x plus 2. So set that equal to 0, you get x equals negative 2. So x plus 2 is my factor, so x equals negative 2 is my 0. What was the exponent on that factor? A1. And lastly, my last factor was x minus 5 all squared equals 0. That means x minus 5 has to equal 0 or x equals 5. So my last factor here is going to be x minus 5 all squared. So it's going to be x equals 5. What was the exponent on the factor? A 2. And so now I've found all the zeros and the multiplicity. And a nice check is if you add up all the multiplicities, you should get the degree of the equation. And 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 6. So I found part B, I found all the zeros and I've stated their multiplicity. But I also want to look at the behavior at each zero or where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now hopefully you remember if the multiplicity is even, then the graph will touch the x-axis and it will turn around. 
So it's going to touch and turn around at x equals 0. And it's also going to touch and turn around at x equals 5. And then when the multiplicity is odd, it crosses the x-axis. And that is going to help us when we graph this function. So since I've run out of room on this page, I've written all this information down on the next page. So hang on. So you can see I've written the degree. I've also given you a neater version of the table that we found on the previous page. I like these tables because they organize all the information very easily. So before I can draw my graph, I need to figure out the end behavior of the graph. So to do that, I need the leading coefficient. What is the coefficient in front of that x squared? Well, it's negative 1. So I know that my leading coefficient, excuse the bad handwriting, is negative 1. So the degree is even, the leading coefficient is negative 1, so I know both ends of the graph point down. So now all I have to do is graph. So let's put my zeros on there, but before that I need to have a scale on here. Whoops. So I need to have I'm going to have 1 squared, 1 unit, so that's going to be negative 2, negative 4, and positive 2, and positive 4, and positive 6. So my zeros are x equals 0, x equals 3, x equals negative 2, and x equals 5. So there are my four zeros. And I use the end behavior. I know my graph has to start over here, down here. And it goes up to negative 2. And what happens at negative 2? It crosses the x-axis. So my graph starts at the bottom left, comes up through negative 2, and crosses. What happens next? At the next 0, x equals 0, it has to go through the point where x equals 0. It's going to touch and turn around. I don't know how high my graph is going to go, and we won't know that until we take calculus. So we just draw it going up, and then it has to come back down and touch and turn around. So let me draw that in. Your graph might go up a lot higher or not nearly as high as mine. It doesn't matter. Okay, so there it has touched and turned around at x equals 0. Now let's have a look at the next 0. x equals 3, it's going to cross the x-axis. So my graph has to go up and cross the x-axis. So, whoops, let me get my pen. And here it goes up, it comes down and crosses when x equals 3. And my last 0 is when x equals 5, and it's going to touch and turn around. So that means it's going to come down, I don't know how far, it goes up to x equals 5, it touches and turns around. So I just have to graph the very last bit of the graph. And one thing to notice, my graph lands up pointing down in this direction. Is that what the end behavior said? Yes. So that's a nice confirmation that my graph looks correct. Now remember, your graph could go up a lot higher or it could go up lower. It doesn't matter as long as it has this basic, basic shape, that is all we're looking for.